As Daikon becomes suspicious of the camp's new guests, Ruth and River race to keep the highest alive. Sheriff Conley's indiscretions are jeopardized when new agents arrive in town. Things have gone terribly wrong on the compound. Despite all the mayhem that took place in the final episode of season three, according to some, nothing is out of place and everything is going according to plan. This synopsis is saying a whole lot, so let's go ahead and break this puppy down, shall we? It tells us that in episode two, Daikon is gonna become suspicious of the camp's new guests. And we can assume here that they're referring to Joan's quirky love couple friends, Laura and Aaron. Hopefully no one else is foolish enough to just show up on the compound the way that these two did. And what kind of friends are they really? No one really knows. Honestly, from the very beginning, when they arrived at the camp, I've been waiting for the transformation of Joan's character. Joan's character flip-flops like a fish out of water, and it's hard to tell whose side she's really on. I mean, if you think about it, will you let your friends, your real friends, anywhere near that Rakadushi Zoo? Uh, not really, right? And now Daikon is suspicious of them. And I wonder why, because they really haven't done anything except go to the bathroom. And I know he ain't suspicious of Laura because she already bleeds purple blood, right? She's all in. But that husband, Aaron, on the other hand, he may be the cause of Daikon's concern. Now we all know what happens when Daikon is suspicious. He's gonna put his teeth in your bag like a hungry pit bull and not let up until he knows that you're not on the side of the enemy because if you are it's off with your head right i mean look at how long he barked at andrew best case scenario it's just his imagination and laura and aaron will get the chance to escape daikon's deadly snarl the synopsis also tells us that ruth and river race to keep the highest alive this is our next foretold plot why why do they want to keep this fool alive, especially River, being that he's the one who actually caused him to be incapacitated in the first place? Y'all think about it. When and if they can resuscitate the highest, when he comes to his right mind, he's going to figure out that River is the one who tried to kill him with the magic. <laughs> then he's going to kill him. Like, why are they trying to keep this animal alive? The same animal who's been R-A-P-I-N-G him right shoving objects into places they shouldn't be just humiliating him when and wherever he felt like it i just stand there and watch him float away to the raccoon i don't know maybe ruth talks some sense into his head and looking at it from like a different perspective maybe she knows that if they can just get him to come too that she can convince him otherwise you know just try to get him to think that river actually tried to save him instead of hurt him and this is one heck of a risky proposition don't you think ruth just liked to play games like this <laughs> We don't, we don't ever know which way she's going to take things with him. But one thing we do know is that she has a little bit of control over the highest at times. And she's going to also protect River 2 at the same time. And judging from episode number one, there's going to be distrust amongst the three thieves, right? So I don't know. Ruth better watch her back while she's trying to protect everybody. And our final plot in this synopsis is perfect for adding more meat to the bone for episode number two. We cannot continue without throwing sleazebag Sheriff Conley into the mix. It tells us that Sheriff Conley's indiscretions are jeopardized when new agents arrive in town. So in the trailer, we learned that the entire FBI investigation has been taken over by Batty Barbie here. <laughs> and Supervisor Mac is now a mere agent that's just helping out, right? And she told everybody in that briefing room that she wants to go to the compound guns blazing. So Sheriff Conley is about to get found out and locked up. <laughs> They need to throw him inside of his own jail cell for like a few days so he can cool off him and that part right below his service weapon. Did y'all see him with, you know what, never mind. <laughs> I better not say that. But all the crookedness that he's been doing the past two seasons, it's coming to a head. And I thought that he was the one being held up by Andrew when he was trying to leave the compound, but it was actually a woman. And it wasn't Irene, it was the new deputy. And I knew Andrew didn't punch this woman. <laughs> He was leaving the compound by any means necessary. And this would be Andrew's second attempt at freedom. And one of the first mistakes that I can say that he made initially, in my opinion, was he was trying to save everybody. He wanted to save all the men, the women, the children, the chickens in the back of the chicken coop. <laughs> the chickens.
chickens in the back of that chicken coop? Everybody. And he'd be a fool not to learn from past mistakes of trying to escape. And hopefully he'll escape with his life on this round. And I don't know, y'all, this escape plan may just work because we can see that he has his FBI street clothes on this time. Maybe the highest gave him another chance to get in his good graces. Because the last time we saw Andrew, he was laying in the grass, naked, sweating, breathing heavy, holding a gun. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know I'd appreciate it. And if you're a fan of Tyler Perry's Ruthless, go ahead and watch the next video. And sub to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. It's been fun. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one.